Welcome back to the Wednesday Night Photo Show, our weekly or bi-weekly chance to sit around and talk about some photography stuff with everybody. My name is Scott. Uh, I'm the main photo instructor here at Dan's Camera City, and with me tonight, we've got Ben. How's it going? One of our hardware specialists, and Ben does all kinds of stuff around here. Yeah, ain't that the truth? <laughs> <laughs> we wear many hats around here. Everybody's got a bunch of stuff going on. Yeah. So... We've got several things lined up this week, but I know that one of the urgent things we wanted to touch on was some of the stuff that's going on in the photo industry right now. I know that I've got people in some of my classes who are telling me, okay, I'm taking this class because I ordered this camera and then uh, it's not here yet, but I'm taking the class and it'll get here when it gets here so that I know how to use it when it gets here. But I'm hearing more and more of that. What's going on right now? Oh man, um, well, I mean, the easy cop-out answer would be, hey, welcome to COVID. Um, whether Global it, pandemic. Supply I mean, chain is screwed. There's a lot of factors. I mean, COVID has cr definitely created um, a couple different workflow and supply chain issues that many uh, of the camera companies are experiencing on some level. We're mm -hmm. also experiencing in a lot of different industries. Uh, right now, I just tried to buy a bicycle a little while ago from a local shop. I'm on a very long pre-order, so I almost count our blessings, um, but we're seeing it in a lot of different areas. One of the reasons we're seeing that, it's not so much that supply is an issue, demand has spiked up massively. Mm -hmm. Okay. So a lot of us are now spending more time outside or we're stuck inside. So now all of a sudden we have a massive influx of people that are doing more studio work. You know, so we're okay. seeing a lot of that, but we're seeing people that need yeah. to do more with their nature photography or more with their bird photography or just bird watching. Uh, binoculars has been a big spike for us as well. So we now have a lot of um, new offerings and that to kind of meet that demand. I'm going to take right. my glasses off because I know that, <laughs> you know, I can't see you, but that's all right. So <laughs> it's a couple different factors. And of course, we're also dealing with companies coming out with some very high end and highly anticipated pieces. So it's kind of a perfect right. storm. Um, and yes, shipping has been part of an issue with it as well. The main thing to keep in mind, though, is we're an authorized dealer. We uh, participate in the same programs as um, you know, b &H, Amazon, pretty much all of your major places that you would go yeah. to or this kind of stuff, we're all on that same list. So when there's 30 cameras that are you know, allocated for the East Coast, they have to divvy that up. And most of the time, there's not even that many. It might be six for the Eastern right. Seaboard. I mean, that's that's pretty severe. Wow. So you know, we're getting most of these cameras in steadily, uh -huh. but the misconception that we have a lot of um, both new and current clients reaching out to us is with, well, I'll just keep calling, you know, oh, you don't have a Canon R. Oh. Well, I'll just keep calling back or, you know, whatever the piece is, because that high demand thing, it's mm -hmm. kind of across the board. We have a lot of really cool things that have been innovating lately, you know, to get people excited. So it's just kind of a perfect storm. Um, the pretty much only way that you know that you're going to at least be able to see it because we have a lot of folks and we get it they just want to see these cameras you know they're not ready to necessarily commit to buying but they just want to see them to understand make a more well-informed decision because they can yeah. take their word for it as the experts we've have you know we've had the hands-on but we we get it you know we, yeah we like i want to see the thing lot. before i buy the thing exactly right so they're just calling to see well can i see it so what we're going to tell you on the phone is, well, it's not available, but you can join our pre-order list. And I get it. You want it right then and there. That's the world that we're used to living in. That's not the case anymore. This is an industry shift that we're seeing. So mm -hmm. what we strongly encourage you to do is just join that pre-order list and we will call you when it's in. First come, first serve basis with that. But granted, we are a, you know, in the grand scheme of things, we're a small business. So instead of competing against 300 people at another location, oh, you're right. waiting for like yeah. four or five, you know, at most. Mm -hmm. Now you definitely want to see it and jump over those people. And maybe you have a little bit more of an interest. You can put down a refundable hundred dollar deposit. And the difference okay. is going to be twofold. One, we're going to hold it for a lot longer for you. You know, we'll call and check in, but also we will, um, 
you know, allow you to kind of jump ahead on that list over the people that didn't put money down. Mm-hmm. And we get it if things change or you do get lucky and you might manage to find one that fell off a truck or whatever, just call them. <laughs> you know, so right, because that's you're 100% looking at, refundable, right? If you're looking at a two or three thousand dollar body or, you know, even a five hundred dollar body, a hundred bucks isn't a big deal, especially mm-hmm. if you know you can get that money back. You know? Yeah. It just holds the thing. But it's a little but yeah, bit- I, so I guess like yeah. if okay, so if I want to see some new camera that just came out and I'm having trouble finding it anywhere, I'm not gonna have any better luck anywhere than no. there, here, there's right? a lot of like people it's, say, well I'll, I'll look somewhere else and then they call back five minutes later because you know we're, <laughs> nobody we're, else got them either. That's exactly and <laughs> we have you know gone the extra mile for folks. You know, we know our customer base is just absolutely amazing. Oh, yeah. And for the new people that are coming in, we want to show them how amazing we are. So if we hear of it being available right now, somewhere else, we'll let you know. Mm -hmm. Rather you have the thing because we know you're going to come back to us because we went that extra mile for you. You know, it's the same price everywhere. It's more about building a relationship with people. And that's why we want to be so clear and open and transparent with them, you know, with things that are going on. Because it's not just this industry, you know, it's, it's all of them. But... That being it's said, building when we, materials like I've been trying to work on my kitchen and like, <laughs> yeah, forget. lumber. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. And my DIY list, my my honeydew list is uh, <laughs> pretty much furloughed at this point. Um, the other consideration, of course, is if we do have one that is magically available, which has happened. Mm-hmm. Maybe running social media here, I will immediately take some pictures and post it on Instagram and Facebook. So if you're not following us on those platforms, you might miss an opportunity. Because right. it's okay, gone yeah. within, I think the longest a piece stayed here was about eight days. Like I just posted late last week about a Nikon Z6 II. Guess what just mm-hmm. left the building today? <laughs> For people that just want to see it, you're mm-hmm. missing that opportunity, you know, because I'm going to hold it for three business days for those people that aren't making it. people that are on the list. Yeah. And we're going to hold it as a courtesy for three days and then we'll make it available to the next person on the list. Mm-hmm. You know, so the other thing is don't send us to voicemail. We're going to call you, if, you know, if there's something <laughs> important that you cared about. Right. The other thing along the same lines, though, is if you already have a special order, you don't need to keep checking in. We will call you when it's in. You know, we're, we're not. Okay. Keeping- yeah. Um, but you know, as soon as we verify, Hey, that's the thing that person wanted, you know, shipping went fine and it's, you know, the, the real thing and everything's good to go. We will call you as soon as that's available. I know it's tough with the special orders. Like, cause you feel yeah. like a kid waiting for Christmas. Like, is it here yet? Is it here yet? Is it here yet? <laughs> Unfortunately, you know, because there's no way to give like a guaranteed ETA and we live in a world where, you know, if I order something, I know two days later it'll show up on my doorstep. That's not the situation anymore. Yeah. Um, You know, now granted, we are seeing them come in a steady stream. It's usually two or three pieces, but they're already spoken for. So if you want to get on that list, you just have to do that. And all you got to do is call and it's a, you know, five or 10 minute phone call. Of course, we'll make sure that what you're asking for is the right fit for you. Mm -hmm. You know, but things like a a Canon 90D or a Nikon D7500, that like thousand dollar, you know, what we would like to call like a pro enthusiast, like somewhere in between fast camera that's super easy to use very hard to get oh wow now because we're solutions driven though we might still show you you know some other options to say like hey this is available now have you considered you know oh, right like this is a comparable thing exactly we can actually get these right now yeah. like sony's having a little bit of an easier time with that pro crop sensor market which is also mm-hmm. phenomenal okay. for video so like an a6100 or an a6400 if you want it to be weather sealed super easy to use super compact i just sold the last one i had today we'll probably back you know have them back in very shortly so there are some opportunities to say okay i know you had your heart set on that are you open to some other stuff and anybody right. who's been to the store, they know how we are about that kind of stuff. It's just a very easy, gentle conversation. Yeah, I can see how that could make sense for like, I really was looking for a camera for some place that I'm going or some event that I've got coming up. Yeah. And now time is really kind of a factor, right? And if time really is a factor and it's, you know, I need this lens or something like that, we have an amazing rental pool, which is all oh, on right. the yeah. Um, You know, that's 
such a massive benefit. And if you're trying something with the intention of, well, I need it now, but I really wanted to buy it, you mm -hmm. can take half of your rental fee for 30 days and use it as a coupon right, towards that or something else. That's huge. You know, considering three nights, you get 50% off. So pick up Friday, drop off Monday, you're saving a lot of money. And you might also make a better decision. Because you, yeah. you might, you know what? I loved that, but I think I want something different. Mm -hmm. You know, especially with how much of an investment a lot of these toys can be, whether it be a basic point and shoot all the way up to, you know, a $3,500 model, that peace of right, mind right. is huge. People come to us for that human element. So is there anything that there's like not a supply problem with? Like what's what's actually working well right now? Binoculars are tight and lenses are tight and cameras I mean, are tight. Well, I mean, take a look. I mean, I, I know it's it might sound all doom and gloom. It's really not. There's a lot in the store. Mm -hmm. There's still a lot. And we do have the used section. So there's there's still a lot going on. Um, and I haven't even locked up all the gear for the night. I mean, that's that's not even everything. So mm -hmm. you're seeing the shelves a little emptier than they should be. But, you know, one of the things that I can say, if you're a Nikon uh, Z shooter or you're looking at that series or if you are looking at the EOS R systems from Canon, I have a lot of the lenses. The lenses are actually easier to get than the bodies. Than the bodies are. It's wow. kind of a, a, an egg and chicken situation. Um, I see boxes. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to half later. We got, he says, uh, you ordered a Z62 and everyone was showing on the one back order, including Nikon. Yeah. Yeah. Week and a half later called and said it was in. Yeah. So you just get on the list and like, seriously. Yep. Yeah. And, and thank you, Bob, for that. I mean, that's a perfect example of everywhere saying like, you're not going to get it. You're not going to get it. And you're just sitting on the couch. It costs you nothing truly. I mean, in the grand scheme of things to at least get on that list and get notified. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that's yeah. allow yourself to be pleasantly surprised. It's happened quite a bit. We've actually had some where they ordered it that day. And because it shipped that day, they got notified, you know, a day later or same day. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a luck of the draw. But, you know, um, but if they weren't on that list, they didn't ever like, you know, they call back the next day. And yeah, there was one here, but it's already gone. You got to play to win. I mean, that's yeah. that's pretty much what it comes down to. If you're if you're sitting on the sidelines and saying like, eh, I'll just wait, I'll, I'll call back. This isn't like anything we've seen in the past. It's not like it'll settle yeah, this out. Is, this in a is a year. pretty new development. I don't remember ever yeah, seeing a supply situation like this. It's not like it's going to settle out in three weeks and you know all the pre-orders are going to be fine. This is an ongoing issue. So yeah. make sure that you're having that dialogue with us. But thank you for that, Bob. I, re I really appreciate that. Um, anybody else in the comments, please list any questions or anything like that. Yeah, um, for sure. We're always yeah. here to answer questions live. So if you can just throw them in the chat and we will make sure we get to them for you. He and I are just talking because you know, <laughs> we, we want something to fill in, but we really want to be interacting with you. Yeah. So if you have questions about anything, please let us know. Um, along the same lines with the rental pool, we actually have a new arrival. So that's kind of cool. Oh, what what showed up? So in Sony, um, full frame lenses from Tamron have been garnering a massive following. And for very good reason, they're doing very, very well in a lot of side-by-side -side comparisons to the pro G Master lineup, as Sony likes to call it, mm -hmm. they're going toe to toe in a lot of scenarios. The 70 to 180 is a 2.8 lens, um, great for a little bit of sports, a little bit of portraiture, a little bit of long distance landscape. Um, phenomenal for anybody that you know is looking to kind of get into that 2.8 zoom range for mm -hmm. some professional or better low light, um, and not have it be over two thousand dollars. And and here's the cool thing, this is the Sony G Master. Awesome lens. You know, it's about the size of all of them. You know, and it runs over $2,000. There's a bit of a difference. And they're side by side right now. Mm -hmm. That's with the lens hood on. And the, it's about half the half the weight and size. Now, oh, wow. this is fully weather sealed, um, full 2.8 all the way through. Really nice fast focus. Um, and it does a phenomenal job on you know all of the Sony. So it's exactly the same performance in um, eye autofocus, animal eye autofocus. Um, mm -hmm. I actually have some samples that I can show you. Um, this is actually a lens that came out like right in the middle of quarantine. Yeah. Um, 
Oh, Sony A1 ordered yeah. in January. Any ideas? So that's another one that we have to kind of keep in mind. Um, you know, that that's their flagship camera. You're talking about one of the most high demand cameras that is out there. Um, the mm. only people that we are aware of that have gotten their cameras are people that are a part of the um, Sony Pro Services. That's for professionals that have like a lot of gear. Um, if you have two bodies and I want to say three or four of their professional lenses, that might be something that you qualify for and you get kind of first dibs priority. But oh, okay. there's some other extenuating circumstances specifically with that one. We actually have to kind of look at world events. Um, so first up, the Olympics are coming this year. Oh, no. So, <laughs> so I didn't even think about, yeah. No flagship camera. We really have to keep that in mind. So, you know, that's that's going to be a tougher one to get. Like if you All the reporters in the world are after that particular model. Exactly. So journalism is the other thing. So one of our reps, Jason, um, <laughs> you know, was kind of giving us some blow by blow on that. So Associated yeah. Press, you know, any new stuff, any NFL shots, they're exclusive with Sony. Of course, they're going to go to the the pro flag oh, stuff. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's that's kind of a cool thing. If you watch the NFL this year, you were watching pretty much everything with a Sony A1. All the sideline stuff uh, for video was live streamed out of a Sony A1. Um, and any of the photos that you've seen was exclusive because NFL has exclusive contract with Associated Press. That was also with that. Now, the other thing, um, not to be political, but it was a world event. Since Associated Press has exclusivity with Sony, there were press tents um, during the election time in D.C. Guess which tents got destroyed when the Capitol was stormed? Oh, so oh, all that Sony gear. <laughs> we're also dealing with gear that has to get replaced. Uh -huh. so if you're on a pre-order for that, we will let you know as soon as it comes in. But right now, they give no promises or ETAs. As an industry, whether it's Sony, Nikon, Canon, Olympus, Fuji, all of them, it's it gets there when it gets there. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's a lot of extenuating circumstances. Of course, the Olympics do make it a little. That's, that's interesting. Like chasing that flagship camera. Like there's all this stuff all over the planet that makes yeah. That you're fighting against trying to get that I'm model. I'm glad that nothing ships from the Suez Canal. So <laughs> <laughs> let's just count our, our blessings there. But again, we get it. If you just want to see it, I mean, it's a $6,500 camera. That's a big investment. But if you're curious mm -hmm. about it, we have already played with it. We've already seen it. We've already touched it. We went through it. We are very impressed with it. And we can answer just about all of your questions. And we can explain to you the differences of how it compares to the other models. Because it's fifty five hundred dollars. That's something that Sony hasn't done before. So we can kind of discuss. Okay, well, if those things are your priority, these cameras actually might be better for you. And great news, those are available. You can actually get your hands on one. Yeah, I'm not going to take all of your money if I don't have to. We're very much focused on it being, you know, the oh. right for you. Breaking news from uh, from Ooh. our co Evan. <laughs> Hey, so one of the cool things is during these photo shows, Kevin, our owner, is behind the scenes watching to answer any kind of like deep new stuff. So great news. You were on a pre-order list. You've probably been on that pre-order list for a really long time. So aren't you glad you tuned into the photo show? Wonderful. There you stuff. go. Wonderful stuff. Anytime it is on you its way. about that, we can let you know. Um, but it is kind That's of, awesome. you know, Bob Ackerman, now with Janice. I mean, those are really perfect examples of what we're talking about. Right. But again, Janice, if you have questions about it in the meantime, or if you know that you're getting that camera in your case and you're saying, okay, what do I need in the meantime, you know, to just get right off the ground running, we can help you with that prep as well. So I'm glad you tuned in tonight because that really worked out in your favor. Yeah. Send other people to us. <laughs> it's a lot less competitive here. Ah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that feeling when your camera comes in, that's huge. Um, so those are con some considerations and it's the same thing with some of the lenses. So um, yeah, so that's that's the pre-order world right now. If you want something, you have to play. Right. To get involved with Just it. put your name on the list. That's all it is, right? It is non-committal. You know, if you want a little bit more of an advantage, put the hundred dollars down. Mm -hmm. And if you change your mind, no big deal. No big deal. There's no pressure. There's no judgment on that kind of thing. Life happens. I get it. These are big money items. But if you're looking at, you know, something that's a thousand dollars, a ten percent refundable deposit, that's pretty fantastic. Yeah. 
All right. So what else new do we have going on? I know there's some other stuff. Yeah. No, there's some there's new that. gadgets that have arrived and some sales that are going on. Uh, so there's definitely some sales going on. Uh, one of the nice ones is ProMaster is once again offering up to $50 off their XCM tripod line, uh, specifically in silver. So that line, huh. um, the tripods are mostly black, but they have little accents with different colors. But silver, I guess they've just got too many. So once again, they're doing uh, $50 off, whether that be... Um, you know, our carbon fiber version or an aluminum version, you're going to get a really nice deep sale without any kind of like having to buy more of nice. something to get a sale on Yeah, that. that's a great little, like if you're looking for something that you're going to yeah, take like you. out on the trail with you, right? Um, I always talk about this stuff. Like we just talked about this in our Better Scenic Photos class where we're talking about different tripods and like big heavy tripods for landscape kind of stuff. But then like you don't want to walk too far with it. I don't know if you've checked out these XCM tripods, um, but if you want to take a look at them, let's take a look at these yep. tiny little tripods that are super lightweight and they just strap onto your bag. So the, the XEM 522, they both fold up to be just the length of the legs, which is great. And then you've got the XEM 525, which is going to be more of a full size tripod, but they're both super travel friendly. They come in carbon fiber and they come in aluminum. Um, carbon fiber, of course, is going to be a little lighter and actually more stable, which is kind of cool. So if you care about long exposures might be something to consider but that's a really nice thing to treat yourself to because everybody needs a good tripod doesn't matter what you yeah. do yep and if you are like out stomping around in the woods man that weight savings makes a difference fast every ounce counts <laughs> every ounce counts so that's yeah. that's really important um back to things that are new um if i'm able to share my screen i want to show you some sample photos with this Tamron 70. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so let's take a look at that. So we will share my screen, share screen. Great. Share entire screen. I haven't done this in a while. <laughs> All right. So we can see my screen. Awesome. So we are going to come into here. So these are all some different shots. So first off, um, these were all taken by um, our equipment specialists. So this one was done by Steve. This was a little bit of off-camera flash. As you notice right away, phenomenal background blur, as you can see, but really great fast action and just nailed this shot straight coming on, which is straight coming on it can actually be really hard for a camera to focus. So that's a, a mm -hmm. good testament to how quickly this guy locks onto a subject. Yeah, that's a good stress test right there. Absolutely. So the next one that we can look at, if I just do this, um, 70 to 100, uh, sorry, 70 to 180 is often um, kind of missed for its landscape ability, but mm -hmm. you have some phenomenal ability to just take a really gorgeous scene and just compress it. Um, this is at uh, a, a lake that I go to um, during the summer in upstate New York. But what's great is you lose your sense of distance and you can really isolate a subject in a beautiful way. Um, this pine tree, just to give you guys some, some sense, this is about 200 feet away from me. Mm -hmm. And that back line of pine trees is, I would say, another 800 feet. And they're just stacked on top of each other. So it, it creates for some really compelling landscape photos. But then if we come in, hope you guys don't mind snakes. This is a very nice relaxed garter snake that I had the ability to hang out with. Nailed the autofocus on such a tight subject. Great mm -hmm. background blur. Yeah. And I was sitting at 2.8, so just the head is in focus. But then I cropped in. And we'll go to full screen for that. And we can see the cloud in his eyes and how sharp his jawline nice. is. So anybody that's wondering how sharp these lenses are, they're very similar to the G Masters, if not the same, indistinguishably. So that's that shallow true. depth of field. As oh you move God. down the snake's neck there and that, that focus just falls off. Yeah. So you've nailed focus on a very narrow little slice of what's going to be in focus in the frame. Exactly. I mean, that's that's pretty compelling for a lens that's, you know, half the price of the Sony um, and with a, a better warranty. And of course, I had to take a photo of our friends, our, our, uh, our family's puppy. <laughs> so he's he's a little bigger now, but animal eye autofocus, as you can see, worked out beautifully. Mm hmm. So even when he was running, yeah, nice around, stuff. but he's just a cutie, of course. And then <laughs> one last um, compelling landscape shot that I'll show you. This 
everybody knows the steel stacks in Bethlehem. So mm-hmm. this shot from, um, you know, very close to like the hill to hill bridge. Over by the bridge, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I would say we're like a half mile away and those mountains are even farther away. And this is, you know, pretty much unedited, mm-hmm. um, exported as JPEG. So, you know, we're getting really good color rendition, um, excellent sharpness and, you know, definitely worth it. So the one thing that you would go away, snake, too many photos. How do I get back to you? How do I come back to you? Great. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Sorry about that little, you know, time loop journey. <laughs> so then of course the question is, well, what's, what's this big monster going to give me that this little wonderful beast isn't going to give me? It's a big answer. This guy does not have in lens stabilization, which is the same as the other Tamrons. However, with a telephoto, that can be important. So Mm -hmm. the types of photography where that stabilization would be worth at least being aware of that it Mm -hmm. could be better is going to be if you do a lot of panning sports action or if you're somebody who's moving with fast stuff Mm -hmm. a lot, like the shot behind me. (laughs) When life gives you melons, you might be dyslexic. If you want to do panning shots a lot where um, the background is blurry from motion, but your subject mm-hmm. is sharp, stabilization is a huge factor. Stabilization helps out with if that. If yeah. you're doing fast action sports photography again, or if you're doing pet photography a lot, stabilization could be a factor. Mm-hmm. But this is, again, one of those reasons why renting can be a really good thing, because you might say, oh, man, that's actually something that I need. I guess I'm just going to have to wait and say, hang on. Try this out for you know 12 bucks a night or whatever it is and see if, well, actually the way I shoot, it is fine. Because mm-hmm. Sony's are um, in-body stabilized themselves for the most part. So it might be enough. And then you've pocketed some extra money, which is great. Right. You know, we, we want to spend, spend on more toys. <laughs> exactly. Because <laughs> yeah, it's not just about the lenses and cameras. There's always something different. You know, hey, take a class with Scott so you can really master your art too. <laughs> Don't forget about that. Um, I appreciate the plug. Thanks. <laughs> it's important. It's, this is a craft. A lot of people have a, a misconception that if I get that next thing, that'll be the thing that changes my life and that'll change the way I shoot. Mm-hmm. These are tools, but you have to know how to utilize those tools. So yeah. Um, okay, so what else is new? So we talked about tripod sales. We talked about rental. Um, another really cool toy is this little guy right here. So Oh, yeah, you were showing me that thing. Yeah, it's a mini LED light, um, the, which is great for phones. It'll actually just mount directly on. I can show you here. It'll mount directly onto phones. So if you're somebody who does FaceTime conferences or something like that a lot, that's pretty great. And it does get pretty mm-hmm. bright if you're in a dark situation. I mean, you can see a difference if I hold it in front. Um, on my laptop, it does a really great job too. Because I have so much bright overhead light, though, it's not going to um, you know, outperform that. Mm-hmm. But If you're somebody who likes to FaceTime on the couch or something like that in your living room and it's a little darker or something like that, it makes a big difference. Right. When you when it is kind of dark and you need that little extra bump of light so that your image quality on your webcam isn't. And you can, you know, control the brightness with a a wheel that's on the top. And I don't know if Mm -hmm. you can see it, but you can change the actual color temperatures as well. So that's kind of good. Oh, nice. Okay. So you can warm that up so I don't look like a pale. Washed out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that that really helps if you if you're in desperate need of a tan. <laughs> um, but for thirty bucks and it being so small and it's portable, that's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Because a lot of the uh, the ring lights that are out there, they're you know forty, sixty, right, kind of in the like they're huge. Yeah. So you know that doesn't always work. So this is a really cool tool. There's a little thing that you can slap on your laptop or your phone or whatever for your video conference. Yeah, I mean, this sounds is- like a big help. And for selfies, even good lord, I mean that's that's great. Oh yeah, so all good stuff. Um, nice. So yeah, that's that, uh, that's a lot of what's going on. There is going to be more coming up for the Mother's Day sales. Um, so keep that in mind. I know ProMaster, we are going to be doing some some sales and discounts on that, um, and there will be some other stuff. So stay tuned for Mother's Day gifts. So that's really cool. Awesome. Yeah. Well. Thanks for all the news. Uh, so now let's take a look at the other thing we wanted to talk about tonight, which was post-processing. Because we get these questions a lot. We have, uh, if you're sort of new to doing extra stuff 
with your pictures and you want to take the step beyond like taking the picture and then just printing them or posting them or whatever. And you've been looking at like Lightroom or Photoshop. I know we get these questions about like, okay, what's the difference between something like Lightroom or Photoshop and which one do I want to use and why? Good one. That, that's a huge one. Um, you know, I definitely have my reasons, but everybody uh, does get asked that. So that, that's a huge one. Yeah. All right. So I wanted to just go through a quick little preview here. And I'm going to just share out my screen so I can show you some stuff. Because I, first, I want to talk about like the basics of some of these different pieces of software. But then I want to show off a couple of cool new features that have been rolled out very, very recently. Yeah. And uh, again, kind of some industry stuff that's been going on that has mm -hmm. kind of motivated that. Yeah. So if I share this one. There we go. No time tunnel or anything. All right. So this one, this is Lightroom. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So here's the deal. I think about Lightroom as the first stop for my photos, mm -hmm. being like, this is my general workflow with my stuff is everything goes into Lightroom first. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's the way that I kind of use Lightroom because Lightroom is not just an image editor. Lightroom is primarily for organizing and storing and cataloging all your stuff. So. I want to pull in stuff. I went out and I spent a day shooting someplace, um, say Conowingo Dam. There we go, Conowingo Dam. We got a couple of familiar faces in here. So if you've ever joined us at Conowingo Dam, we've got some pictures of stuff and we've got pictures of eagles and all the different photos. So I've got all of my, all of my pictures from several different trips to Conowingo Dam all stashed together in this one, what they call a collection. And I can stash them all in there. And then I know where they are when I'm looking for them later. And if you have ever tried to find a photo on your hard drive, trying to find, like, I took this picture, uh, maybe it was like March of last year. It's the maybe. worst. Or maybe it was March of the year before that. Or maybe it was April. Where did I, where did I save that photo? Yep. Right, like, trying to think about files and folders on your computer is, like, it was great back when we had, like, three word processing files on a floppy disk, right? <laughs> I remember floppies. Right. I, I, I won't age myself, but you know, we can. We can <laughs> but if you want to keep track of hundreds and hundreds, and I got like 34,000 pictures in my Lightroom catalog here, like trying to manage that stuff on your hard drive by yourself is just a waste of time, frankly. So like, yeah. I've got all my pictures from Lakota Wolf Preserve in my Lakota Wolf Preserve collection, and I can just go there and I can look for them. And which year in the, from Lakota Wolf Preserve, I can come up here and I can search by, let's say metadata. And I can look and I can say, nope, show me the October 2016 trip. And there yeah. they are. I don't have to think about like, which folder are they in? Where are they? Like I do a little cataloging work and then I rely on Lightroom to help me find what it is that I'm looking for. I, I use it every day. Yes, yeah, literally every day I'm in here. User-friendly and being able to manage my stuff and edit quickly, doing batch editing and locating stuff. I mean, I was able to find those photos for the 70 to 180 by just going under a folder where I know it would be and then just looking up that lens and boom. You know, yeah. I, I was ready three minutes look at for this uh, uh, talk tonight. Like if I want to do the same thing, I could go to, let's see, Lakota Wolf Preserve, and I'm going to search, let's see, here, I'm going to say, okay, show me from 29 trip, 2019 trips, give me uh, the Tamron 70 to 200 F2.8. There mm -hmm. we go. Because yeah. all that information is encoded in the picture, so I don't have to do any extra work. So easy. Yeah. Now, it's not just a library. It is also the editor. So I will grab something and then, you know, move on to doing some edits. And if I can like just grab a picture and then edit some stuff, uh, if I grab like that one. Uh, like Wait. this is okay. The color's a little washed out, but when I see something like this, I think, yeah, the color's not great. Let's just go like black and white with it and then make a couple of quick adjustments to make this look a little nicer. If I can take the sky and make it nice and dark. Right, and then kind of enhance some stuff over here. Um, 
where I need to go, and I'm just gonna like drop some shadows down and make it kind of dark and moody. So there's a lot of editing that I do in Lightroom. And that took you what, 15 seconds? Oh, thereabouts. Yeah. Our cameras capture so much information these days that if you're not editing your photos on some level, what'd you spend all that money for? You know? Yeah, kind of. You, yeah. you got Scott, now like, make it your vision. You know, he, Scott just made it black and white. So much less distracting than all those colors. You really get a sense of mood and feel. There's a, a, an emotion now attached to this picture. It's it's worth the time to do that. And I'm glad you brought up all the data that our cameras capture because the other thing about Lightroom is it's really optimized for working with raw files. Yeah. And if you're not already working with raw files, uh, I'd encourage you to start. Now, shoot, now I shoot yeah. RAW plus JPEG most of the time because I can get both. I can get the JPEG that's just the quick, ready-to-go picture, but I've always got that RAW file to go back to. Mm -hmm. And when, like, I know that I find myself falling back in those RAW files when the light gets really challenging, mm -hmm. right? Like when we run into dynamic range issues and there's a lot of very bright in the picture and there's a lot of very dark in the picture and there's not necessarily a whole lot in sure. between. Right. The difference here is that, okay, so I've got a JPEG file and this is a sunset in the middle of August and it looks like crap because this is the JPEG. Okay. Yeah. This is going to be big then. Right. So if I want to get back this blown out sky back here and I want to pull up these dark shadows over here, I'm going to start to run into problems mm -hmm. because the JPEG is already a pre-rendered ready to go image file. So the camera's already taken and done a lot of the processing for you and spit out this JPEG, but it doesn't have near as much data in the file, right? So I'm just gonna zoom right in and show you what I'm talking about right here. I'm gonna try, and this is just impenetrable white right here. And I wanna calm down those highlights. So I'm gonna come over into develop and I'm gonna say, pull the highlights down and pull the whites down. Cause I can tell that those are just completely out of it. And it, you start to get this gross banding going on. If you yeah. guys can see that, right? You're pulling something, but now it just kind of looks a little... Yeah, I can pull it further down, but I just turn it gray or muddy, right? There's not a whole lot going on here because this is data that's been clipped off the end of the file. There's nothing else there. So I can make it darker, but I can't ever bring more detail back in there, right? Yeah. Now, if I come and step over to the raw file, same deal, this is completely blown out. If I take a look at this, like this is just impenetrable white highlights. No, that is right? blown out, yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna bring down my highlights, I'm gonna bring down my exposure. Oh, that already down my... better. Yeah. And there's texture in here and there's detail in the clouds. There's stuff going on back there. Mm -hmm. right? Cause there is more data in the raw file than the, the camera is, the, or the computer is showing you and we can pull that stuff back in when we're working from the raw file. And Lightroom makes it pretty freaking easy, right? Like I can just come in here and say, yep, pull down those whites and those highlights and I can get that texture back in here in a way that doesn't fall apart the way the JPEG file is. And, and guys, just again, as a refresher for people that are joining out, if you have questions about what the heck we're doing, please type them in, you know, um, any kind of sit situations that you've encountered, please ask your questions, all right? Now, there's a couple of neat new things that I'm kind of excited about that has been introduced in Lightroom and in Photoshop. Uh, there's a few nifty new features. For starters, let's take a look at, go back to this one. This was one of our trips to Lakota Wolf Preserve. Oh. That's zoomed all the way in. Oh. Now this is... <laughs> Hi, puppy. This was last March. There was snow on the ground. This is Teton. Teton is very photogenic. But when I zoom in here, I can see that my camera did something a little funny. And I don't know how well you guys can see this on the stream, but there's a little blockiness going on in here. There's a little pixelation. If I zoom into like 200, you can start to see this blocky stuff going on in yeah. this area. Right? And kind of up here, there's this chunky stuff. And that's just as some artifact of the raw file and the camera and the lens and 
I don't know exactly what's going on there, but I don't love it. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose, let's see, from over here. I need to make this <laughs> bigger so I can see what's going on. Choose enhanced details. And enhanced details is a brand new feature in Lightroom and Photoshop. And it takes a raw file and it uses some kind of machine learning magic to enhance the details in the raw file. Now this is, we're zoomed way, way in to get a look at what's going on here. But if I take a look at those eyelashes there that are kind of blocky looking, enhanced details is gonna smooth that stuff out for me and just give me a nicer looking file. It is computationally intensive. So this is telling me it's gonna take a little bit of time to think about this. But when I hit enhance, what it's gonna do is it's going to analyze this file and it says it's thinking about this file, it's creating a DNG, uh, Adobe Digital Negative with enhanced details. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna take a couple of minutes to think about that and it's gonna spit out a brand new raw file for me that sits alongside this one in Lightroom. So they're still grouped together and I st can still keep track of them. And it's got all the same metadata but let's take a look at those two side by side. At 100%, I'm gonna throw this one up here and I'm gonna throw this one next to it. You got the, you have uh, water running there? What's that? You have water oh, running? I do not have water running. What I've got is my computer's fans just kicked up. I told you this was <laughs> computationally intensive. <laughs> oh, wow. So the fans just kicked into high gear. But if we take a look at this now. What a difference. Right? Like all this blocky stuff is gone. All the blocky stuff that was here is gone. And now it just looks like hairs lying along the, the wolf's face. And it's a tiny little thing. And these are tiny little details. But that little bit of enhancement just cleans up those files. The ones that I really want to spend a little time on. Right? I'm not going to do this to every snapshot where I'm going to wait a minute and a half to render this new file. But yet, it does make a difference when I go in there and look at those details. It's a super cool feature. That's that's big. That's yeah. Really, really big. Now, the next step from that, we got to move over to Photoshop. When I'm doing my simple edits, when I'm doing my overall adjustments, that's the stuff that I do in Lightroom. When mm -hmm. I need to get very specific with my edits, when I need to remove an object that's hard up against some other object, and I've got lines and I've got to get really tinkery with it, that's when I need to move over into Photoshop. But Photoshop's got this other very cool feature. And I'm gonna switch over to Adobe Bridge here so that I can, this is sort of a multi-step process right now. They're gonna clean this up eventually, I'm sure. But if I take a look at something like, i grab a raw file here. And this is where you really care about an image. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. We're going to take a look at raw files. I know I grabbed one over here. Well, if I wish actually, I can just grab any old file because what I'm going to show you is here, this one. This one I resized down for social media. So this will be a great example. Perfect. Right, or something like that. Oh, yeah, let's do that one. Yeah, let's do this guy. So I'm going to right click. And instead of opening this in Photoshop, I'm going to open in Camera Raw. This is a brand new feature that they just came out with. I got to come down to the thumbnail. And I'm going to say Enhance. And now this new feature is called Super Resolution. If you've ever tried to enlarge a picture, if you've ever tried to say, yeah, take this picture, but expand it out to fit this canvas at like 200% of its size, you know that the image quality really falls apart on you right? Because the computer just can't make up new information that looks like yeah. it belongs in the picture, yeah. except now it can. So this takes even more time, but this is going to double the resolution of the file. It's going to think about it for a while. It's really got to chew on this, but I'm going to zoom this guy into 100% here. So the takeaway from this is, you know, just to bring it back to real world while it's doing it, if someone has, let's say, a 24 megapixel camera, pretty standard for stuff, you know, they can usually do like a 30 by 40 without breaking a sweat, and they want to maybe crop in and blow it up, or they want to, um, you know, make it even larger. This could be a step that they take to kind of keep their detail at larger sizes. Right. Well, I'm thinking about this kind of two things here. That's huge. one. 
we can print up to like 40 by 60 or bigger. And sometimes uh, if I go super big with a print, it's going to start to look funny. This yeah. takes that away. Wow. That's right. Huge. So we're going from here to here. That's 100% on this file. That's a big deal. That's a really, really look big at this. And it doesn't look like I've enlarged it. It doesn't, it, the, the quality is not falling apart. It hasn't gotten all blurry and weird. Wow. So, you know, the, the days of needing a 3000 or $4,000 camera to make, you know, a 60 by 90 or whatever, we're kind of leaving that we can have more, yeah, this is amazing. a lower investment. And this program, well, and the other thing is I'm thinking lot. like, I've got pictures that I took years ago with like a six megapixel camera. Right. That I might want to make some bigger prints from, but you know, cameras just weren't where they are today. Yeah. But this gives me the opportunity to go back and maybe make some bigger prints that are going to look nicer. Wow. That's huge. That's, yeah. I need to go back and look at my own files to say like, okay, I, you know, with an older camera. Um, yeah. What did I shoot on this thing that was like eight megapixels back in, you know, yeah, they, 2008 they or something. Photos and giving them life, taking new photos and giving them more flexibility. And this program's 10 bucks a month. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, like 10 bucks a month gets you Lightroom and Photoshop. And it's always staying up to date. And it's like not, I said, oh my gosh. It, like this, I have this is a feature that just came out in March. Fantastic. Fantastic. And we teach classes on this, which is even more helpful. Speaking of classes, yeah. I just <laughs> had, because, because of this stuff, I had to go back and rewrite a big chunk of my Photoshop class. Because one of the projects that we talk about in my Photoshop class is we do a sky replacement, mm. right? So I'm gonna take this picture, one of the pictures that we use in my understanding Lightroom class. Uh, let me pull it up for you here. Let's see. So something like, Where's my lighthouse? I there see we go. Lighthouse. This guy, right? I just pointed at the screen. That was really helpful. <laughs> Thanks. No, I appreciate it. I saw it. I got it. Barnegat? Where right. am I? So something like, you know what? I'm not even sure. <laughs> something like this one. Lighthouses. It's lighthouses. So I'm going to click the level button and level that out. Doink. Done. Auto. Love it. Yeah. Hit auto here. Now, the reason we use this one in class is because it's a neat picture of a lighthouse, right? Like at the setting sun, but the sky is pretty lackluster. Hmm. So the thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to right click on the picture. I'm going to say, okay, this is the kind of thing I need to do in Photoshop. So I'm going to go to edit in. I'm going to choose Adobe Photoshop 2021, edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. There's a real tight integration between Lightroom and Photoshop. So I can say, edit this thing in Photoshop. When I save it, it spits it back into Lightroom. This is this complete round trip. So we're going to tab over to... Ooh. We don't want to <laughs> There look. we go. <laughs> so what we had done in class previously was I showed people how to make a selection. I showed people how to fine tune that selection by doing some channel adjustments. Yeah. And then we would add another layer and bring in our sky and then blend them together and then go do some touch up on the glass and on the stairs. And we spent uh, maybe 20 minutes out of a two hour class doing the sky replacement here. That's a lot of time. It's a bit of time. And this we'll is a pretty it. common task. So like, you know, we often have like, here's a picture, but the sky is just not doing it for me. Edit, sky replacement. Now I'm curious to see how natural this looks. I'm gonna pick a new sky off my list here. Let's grab that one. There we go. Wizardry. Right. You like that one? You like this one? Or how about that one? Uh, you want to go for like a sunset? We can do that over here. Mm -hmm. How's that look? Oh, wow. And <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. I threw a couple of pictures from our night sky outing if you want to get ridiculous with it. Get ridiculous. One of okay. Phil's photos back there. All right. Mm -hmm. Is that one of mine? I think that might be one of mine. <laughs> no, that's one of mine. That's from uh, Tennessee someplace. I stopped in the middle of the night on a scenic overlook. Well done. But like, and done. <laughs> so, 
for, for people that are just kind of blown away by this and maybe a little intimidated, the way that you would kind of want to think about it, Lightroom is great. Yes, it is nice. <laughs> the way that you want to think of Lightroom is organization, um, yeah. powerful but quick editing without kind of manipulating reality and taking a batch amount of photos, maybe editing one the way you like and saying, great, now do it to all of the rest of them. And it says, okay, boss, and it'll just go through that. Yeah, that Photoshop automation is a huge be, time saver. It is. Photoshop is going to be more for those micro adjustments, things where you want to manipulate reality or really give something um, a lot more power because you're focusing on one photo to really make it your vision. Right. Or in some cases, fix something. I've replaced teeth you know, over the years in Photoshop. That's not something I'll do with, with Lightroom. But again, yeah. you're getting both programs for 10 bucks a month. Yep. That's fantastic. Yeah. And it's not, and you've got like, it's still editable, right? I can go in here and I can turn stuff on and off and change the way that it did this stuff. Yeah. Just by clicking that eyeball. Right. So I can mess around with what it did what I, it's not like a one click and done. You've still got the flexibility and the power of Photoshop if you need to go back and fine tune this. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what you, that's pretty you darn good. That, that None of that was super complicated. I mean, Photoshop does have, quite a reputation for being an intimidating beast. I mean, I, I went to college and I took classes just on this program, you know, mm -hmm. as a course credit. This was easy, what you just did. I mean, it's gotten so much more user friendly in the last couple of years. If you and try that's the thing at some point, that has been happening in the industry, right? Like that's been, I feel like Adobe's kind of been kicked in the butt by other companies that are out there. Yeah. Things like Luminar, Mm -hmm. and Topaz and some of the other companies that have, and they make interesting tools. I've been playing around with them. There's a ton of good stuff out there, but now Adobe's got to keep up because there's other people nipping at their heels with these cool new features. It's kind of like what Sony did to uh, full frame cameras. <laughs> yeah. Innovation right. is good. We want to see competition because, you know, if they're resting on their laurels, we don't benefit as users. Oh, good question. Excellent question, Janice. What's the difference between Lightroom Classic and Lightroom CC? Take it away. That's a great question. All right. So, yeah. So Adobe did us a wonderful favor by creating another program that is also called Lightroom. So there's Lightroom, but then there's also Lightroom. Dead Love and it. dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Lightroom Classic is the one that we recommend for most people. It's yes. a bit, it's got more editing features, a couple of more editing features. It's got a lot more organizing features, but the main difference is that it's focused on storage on your computer. Yeah, it's Whereas Lightroom CC computer. is really focused on cloud storage. Yeah, which of course they will, you know, say like, hey, you get 20 gigabytes for free, which we know, you know. Right, who, that's gone in no time, right? Yeah. Who even has a 20 gigabyte card? You're gonna blow through that so fast. So that's also their way to make more money from you. Whereas Lightroom Classic, it's on your hard drive. You don't have to worry about storage, you're done. Right. Now I still use, the cloud storage for some stuff because I've got Lightroom on my tablet here. Yeah, I, I have on my which tablet. is Lightroom CC. It's the same thing. You see the same interface on this thing as you do on that thing. Yep. And I can take one of my Lightroom collections and I can sync it up so that it shows up in both places and use a little bit of cloud storage. And then I can just like sit on the couch and go through some photos. So it's a cool feature. And I do find myself using both a little bit, but Lightroom Classic is the one that's really focused on desktop storage. And for people who take a lot of pictures, it's really going to have a kind of be kind of the more advantageous program for you. You do get both with the Adobe Photography plan, not the Lightroom plan, but the Photography plan, which includes Lightroom Classic and Lightroom CC and Photoshop for 10 bucks a month. That's huge. But yeah, excellent question because that is a little unclear as to exactly what's going on here. Considering how expensive these programs used to be, and then you know, five years down the line, new program came out, you bought a new camera, wahaha, ha, you gotta dump all that money all over again. Whereas yep. this is just always up to date. That's huge. Yeah, like I said, these features came out last month and I didn't have to go out and buy a new version because I'm on the subscription plan. So and there they are, they just show up. Gotta love it. Right. We do the same thing over here. I'm not going to save that one right now. Yeah. Right, like we can... yeah. No, not that. Not that. Oh, God, that's an old photo. I think that might been be such a good sport. All right. Working here. Good Lord. 
There, we could do there. sky replacement on a portrait. Like you like that? <laughs> All right, you want this one? We could do a little bit of a Simpsons thing there. That's good. This is so much easier than it used to be. My God. <laughs> I mean, you used to have to go in with a brush and you'd have to get away like all of Right, look at the selection around the hair. Like, look at that. I'm a little mad. Right. Wow, I really need a tan there. Yeah, don't zoom in. <laughs> <laughs> now, Ugh. and... An equipment specialist only a mother could love. <laughs> <laughs> so they've also been doing some other stuff. They've, Adobe's rolling out this new thing called neural filters, which are these weird AI filters to do quick adjustments to pick, and I'm gonna abuse you horribly here. I know where you live, be nice. <laughs> <laughs> like basic skin smoothing is a, a pretty standard portrait retouch, but we get that in one click with this. And now I look like a Turn it on. And now, yeah, this is, it's a little heavy handed, but we can turn it down, right? Oh, so you have some, some actual control on it. Okay. Right. So you've got control over what's going on. Okay. This is also, like, seriously, this is a really great tool for if you have, um, like, I, I was just working with a model recently. Wonderful, super professional. Turns out she spent a little too much time in the tanning bed. Not a big issue as far as her skin tone was concerned, but she was so dry that when mm. we started photographing her, all of her skin texture started coming out because she was dehydrated. This was an easy fix. Yeah. And then there's these weird beta test filters. We could turn on something like Smart Portrait. And here's where, like, this is almost venturing into, like, I don't know, Snapchat filters. But let's let's take... Um... Uh, <laughs> I know where this is going. <laughs> so it's got to think about these, right? Because it's rendered... It's This is not happening local on my computer. This is happening on their cloud server supercomputer machine learning platform this called is Adobe Sensei. Sensei. But I could crank up something like facial age, and then it's going to squirt that data out and then do some processing, and then it's going to come back to us for the result. We don't record that... videos, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> I look like my mother. <laughs> I'm sorry, mom, you're much more beautiful. Well, here, let's turn up the angry then too. How's that? The angry? Yeah, there's a slider for anger. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm having flashbacks to Catholic school. <laughs> I feel like whoever that is, is gonna give me a detention. Oh my gosh. We don't record these sessions, right? <laughs> All right. Yeah, we can watch the replay on YouTube. It's cool. Oh, great, yeah. All right. <laughs> there we go. But there's just like, and it's, it's, I feel like it's never ending. There's so much interesting stuff going on in the world of like all this cool new hardware has been coming out, but all this cool new software has been coming out too. And I've just had a ton of fun tinkering with this stuff. The big you know, I, have, I spent the summer playing around with like the, the new noise reduction stuff and the new gigapixel stuff and noise reduction or like blur reduction that can actually account for camera shake by removing like horizontal motion through the frame. That's huge. It's, yeah, We're, it's an amazing time to be like the computational photography stuff that's going on right now is amazing. I mean, shooting and it's just going to get more interesting camera, you know, is definitely still the way to go. But knowing that you have kind of a safety net is so helpful. Yeah, that's, that's wonderful. Yeah. I mean, the big takeaway for me is as powerful as those programs are, they're affordable and they're getting more and more easy to use on such a regular basis that you you were able to just manipulate all of that so well. And I know even two or three years ago, that level of detail would have been 10, 15 minutes from a professional. That's that's big. Putting yeah. that in the hands of people that, you know, might have picked up the program a week ago. Yeah, for sure. Like everything has gotten like the so much easier and so much more approachable. I mean, it, it's still a very deep program. It's still got a lot of stuff and you can kind of get lost in there without somebody to kind of guide you through, okay, these are the things you actually want to spend some time on, but it's gotten so much more approachable. That's it's awesome. so much easier to deal with. All right. So All right. I, I see a lot of people still uh, in the comments and stuff like that. Does anybody else have any questions? Doesn't have to be about Photoshop. Doesn't have to be about the cameras that we talked about. Um, <laughs> we're just about wrapped up, but I want to be able to answer any questions that yep. you might have while we still have some time. 
And if you're all totally shy, that's understandable too. <laughs> it's okay. Don't be scared. There are no bad questions here. Um, <laughs> we have tons of services. Um, you know, stay tuned with us. Always stay in touch. DM us on Instagram. DM us on Facebook. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. Yeah, um, for sure. For used gear, go to our Facebook page. There is an album on our Facebook page where you can see what's available. Um, as well as its condition and pictures and pricing, um, you know, so you can kind of hunt without even having to call or reach out to us. You know what? I'm going to throw one quick link in here. All right, so I'm going to put this out there. We have, I haven't put this out anywhere else yet. Oh, what's a peek. I'm going to double check, but we've got four new free Tamron Tuesday webinars that just came out um, as of today. And there's also, make sure it's still here. Yeah, there is one, precisely one ticket left for our Birds of Prey photo workshop. Whoa, that's huge. So this is a two hour outing. We go out to uh, Trexler Nature Preserve, or Trexler Environmental Center, and our friend uh, brings her birds. She's a falconer. Her name is Margaret Young. She comes out there with a bunch of birds and we fly back and forth and you get, and we work on up close photographs of these birds in flight. Um, from everything from your standard red tail hawk to some pretty exotic falcons and kestrels and all kinds of other cool stuff. I'm going to throw that link in the comments right now. So there is precisely one ticket left. This kind of sells out within a day or two whenever we post it. So uh, you guys who tuned in tonight get first dibs on that one. That's probably one of the most competitive classes to get your hands on. That's huge. So I'll, I'll be surprised if that lasts the night. <laughs> so one ticket. I got one left. You got one golden ticket. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So if there's no, I think we got to everybody's questions and comments. Um, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Thanks, Ben, for giving us a little insight into the wild world of geopolitical ramifications of what's going on behind the scenes in the photo industry. From, from your friendly neighborhood camera store and, and equipment specialist. I mean, like, it's crazy, but that's why it's so important to talk to us. It's a dialogue. It's a relationship. Right. We're here to help you out. For something like what Kevin just did in the comments for Janice. I mean, that's a big part of why people shop with us. That's why they stay in touch with us. That's why we build a relationship. Um, you know, because we care. I mean, that's it's a warm and fuzzy thing, but it really does matter. Heck yeah. All right. Well, that's it for us tonight. Thanks so much for joining us, and I hope we see you again real soon. Have a good one, guys. <laughs> Thank everybody. Nice.